Feels like I've just got done talking to you. Welcome back, Achievers, to your Easy Achievers Game Podcast for the week of September 8th. Thank you so much for joining me this week. We're going to be discussing quite a few things. Red Dead Redemption Riders leaving Rockstar as it seems to continue to lose a lot of its, frankly, identity. We'll be, be curious to see what happens there. Xbox has a new Japan division and maybe, maybe we'll be seeing some strikes in the gaming industry. Who knows? But you, of course, are at the Easy Achievers Game Podcast. We come to you every single week for your viewing pleasure. Of course, these are discussionary pieces. I upload them. We discuss them, of course, in either the YouTube comments or you tweet at me at EVNR1000. And about anything, uh, it could be a news thing, something I said offhandedly. Uh, maybe you disagree with my take on a hot dog should have some sort of cheese on there to make it very, very good. Specifically, blue cheese to make it even better. Eh, goat cheese. I'll replace that. Goat cheese. As long as it, if a hot dog has goat cheese, that means it's going to be great. Maybe you disagree with that. Who knows? Remember, let me know. Of course, we open the show with not so rapid fire every week, but I want to quickly point people I don't usually pimp on this show too much i usually just get right into the show but i do want to highlight a, sh a show i just finished recording uh, right now of course this is the starfield kind of early impression slash uh thoughts on the game that is of course going live uh let's see this will go live and then so that so that episode will already be live no it won't it'll be live tomorrow at noon so this will go live, then the Starfield will go live, then, yeah, that's right, three, three episodes, we're going to have a third about all of my thoughts on the Destiny 2 Course End raid, of course, continuing my light Destiny 2 coverage on the channel, with, of course, my thoughts on the most recent raid, of course, will be its own separate video for your viewing pleasure, all of that will be live, let's see, I'll get this one out first, then, of course, the... Starfield episode will probably go live Monday, and then the Crota Zen will also... Maybe those they'll, they'll go live at the same time. Maybe one will do the weekend. I don't know. It'll be there very soon, though. Thanks so much for joining me this week. I'm excited to discuss the news this week, as it's light. Very, very light news week. But sometimes you need that. It is, it's crazy gaming out there with Starfield, of course. Baldur's Gate 3 coming to PlayStation 5, uh, I believe in early access not yet fully out i i don't remember to be honest but it's been quite quite the year already and we still have another three months of i mean incredible games spider-man 2 of course alan wake 2 of course avatar frontiers of fendor maybe i don't know but this will probably go down as one of the best of the year. So let's talk about it. Not so rapid fire. Red Dead Redemption series writer leaves Rockstar after 16 years. Now, this is spotted on the forums by a user named Rook. And of course, I found this story. Andy Robinson over at the VGC. Former writing director um, has worked on virtually all of Rockstar's major releases over the past 16 years. Notably, He's one of the only three writers credited for both Red Dead Redemption games stories alongside Rockstar co-founder Dan Hauser, of course, someone else who has left. And his name, of course, Michael Unsworth. He's also credited for dialogue writing in Grand Theft Auto 5 and 4, Max Payne 3, L.A. Noir, Midnight Club Los Angeles, and of course, much more. He's gone. One of the biggest writers over there is fully gone now. It seems like we're slowly seeing... The trickling of, of course, all the very, very large veteran talent there, right? That man was close to 20 years there. That's that's very rare in the uh, gaming industry. So we're seeing people slowly leave. Be curious to see if this affects any of the products. Of course, Rockstar is on top of the world. I would doubt it as they are in the position of being able to demand the best talent out there as long as they can match the wages, which they have uh, nearly... Um, infinite source of income inside of Grand Theft Auto 5, of course, with the online and these things. So I'm not too worried as, although you would think I'd be worried because I've been stouting the problems that other industries or sorry, under studios have where 
they've lost so many people. They're barely what they used to be. They're pretty much a shadow of their former selves. Other studios, that, that happens, and it's not a big deal, right? Uh, we always bring up Naughty Dog. It's always a great example of, of something where it's not even run by founders anymore. It's they're long gone. But no one would say that they are on the back foot at all. They're uh, quite the contrary. They're leading games industry uh, studio, probably, in terms of talent and what they're doing. You could also say the same about Rockstar Neely. I mean, they are the big deal whenever they make anything. And we're seeing more and more of their talent leave. I'll be curious to see if we ever notice a dip. I, again, highly doubt that as they command such respect and they command such an income that I doubt they'll have much problem uh, getting talent to come to them. Even inside of the kind of issues that we've had recently. With talent being hard to get to. Xbox has a director of Xbox for partnerships in Japan. Very, very cool. So I saw that they pretty much opened a Japan outlet. And the name of the person is Mena Sato Kato. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. She's the new director of partnerships for Japan. She will be at Tokyo Game Show in the coming days. Xbox will also be having their own Xbox Game Show thing happening there at Tokyo Game Show too. He, I hear that they're going to reveal some things. I don't have it as a new story because I didn't see anything we're talking about, but it does look like there will be some sort of reveals there for Game Pass, of course. Maybe some new partnerships with Japan in terms of studios or partnerships of these kinds to bring certain games there. I don't know. I think they need to continue what they're doing in fostering a connection to Japan specifically uh, because they're abysmal Japan and that is only their own fault, right? They need to figure out how to penetrate ooh, ooh, penetrate well, into the Japan home, right? They've lost over and over again to PlayStation and Switch and it's been so hard as it's, again, incredibly hard to convert. So I'm not coming from a point of view of this is easy, fix it, but they have the tools at that are exposed to figure something out, right? Now, the Series S is maybe the solution to that. Maybe that does get them into a bigger... Now, if I remember correctly, the Series S is like one of the most sold things uh, for Japan, specifically uh, in one of in, in like the first year or something like that. I can't remember. I remember reading a stat similar to that where the Series S was doing pretty good in terms of what Xbox sells there. So maybe the Series S will kind of avail the problems with they need, you know, they usually give uh, they usually like smaller things there. They they enjoy portable things. Maybe cloud gaming will get them into their ecosystem again. They they don't really care too much about just getting a system in the house, right? They maybe want to get on their phones or something. Of course, very popular in Japan. Of course, specifically. So maybe that will be the solution there. But I'll be curious to see what they do to try and improve their relationships with of Japan because it's something sorely missed and if you lose your Japan if you if you never have that Japan things to do with it as we keep seeing over and over again this isn't new I'm not telling any new information here I'm not breaking anything this is not new but with how their problems in Japan that only goes to show other Japan centric studios that they maybe sh shouldn't waste their time making a port to the xbox to launch with or comes to later as they've been so late to other things they've gotten better of course we eventually got games like dragon quest we eventually got games like the persona games right but they had to go out and pay them right for partnerships for these kinds of things to to make sure that they launch on their platforms right so and that makes me think like well with square it and they completely abandoned the Xbox platform. It looks like they're coming back. Maybe maybe they're in a state where it's like, well, you're going to have to pay us to be there, right? Because it, it just doesn't make sense for them, maybe. Or you've shown that, that you're always going to pay, so they're holding out. I don't know. But there has to be something to make it worthwhile to launch this platform. It doesn't seem to be there unless Xbox makes that extra effort. So you're missing something. I wish I could see something come out of that. Suikoden has been uh, delayed. Very sad for me. Uh, Suikoden 1 and 2 have been delayed. So this was a, a post 
Notice regarding release schedule for Suikoden 1 and 2, HD Remaster, Gate Rune, and Dunan Unification Wars. Jesus. So this is from Konami, of course. Now, uh, this is what it reads. We would like to thank Suikoden fans everywhere for your ongoing passion and support for the Suikoden series. Regarding the planned release for Suikoden 1 and 2 Remaster, Gate Rune, and Dune Unification Wars, we have reached the conclusion that despite the very best efforts of our dedicated development staff to release the remasters in 2022, additional time is needed to ensure the quality, performance, and gameplay experience our users deserve. The entire Suikoden team is renewing our efforts to bring Suikoden 1 and 2 HD Remaster to release as soon as possible, or as soon as is possible. We will share further release information as soon as it becomes available on our official social media accounts and official homepage. We appreciate your understanding. Still, I hope you continue to lend so we get in your support. Thank you, and of course, the team. Now, I'm not sad about this. Keep going. Right? I've waited this long for a remaster of Sukunin 1 and 2. I will wait much longer, and this means we might be closer to a Sukunin 5 remaster, which... I mean, it's so it's Jover when that happens. It's Jover for everyone involved. Once we get in five, gets remastered. Gotta be honest with you. Final Fantasy 16 will be getting two paid DLCs. The PC version of Final Fantasy 16 has been announced, of course, with more news on PC port and DLC near the end of the year. So they did say technically that they weren't working on DLC, I believe. If I remember right, could be wrong about that, actually. Anyways. So we know for sure now we're getting two paid DLCs. We don't know the contents of them. PC will be coming shortly as a port from the um, PlayStation version. So we'll be seeing how all this plays out near the end of the year. Maybe they'll shooting for something early next year. Uh, I highly doubt they just de started developing all this. Maybe they did. I don't know. That That seems rare for them to be like oh yeah no we just started development i imagine they already met we're making this so we'll have to see i'm curious what the dlc will be about because there's not really much open at the end of the final fantasy 16 now there is something open to the literal ending of the game right like how you can interpret it i doubt any of the dlc will touch on that because i imagine the purpose of the ending is to be vague maybe it won't be or it may like maybe that's the idea but i can't think of a dlc Now, this is a fun experience. What could the DLC be about? Let me know if you think of something. I, I am, I mean, everything I think of will be further explaining the ending, but I, I imagine that's not what they want to do. Maybe we'll, I wonder if we'll play as the father. Maybe like a, because you technically have events you could play as. I don't know if that's what they would want to do, right? Because they had the huge wars in both the, um, I don't remember what it was anymore, but the the right side of the map where uh, the Odin guy was, he like fought a giant war between all the clans to like unite them all under his banner, pretty much. And then they have the dad of, of Joshua and all them. He did a bunch of battles uh, trying to uh, get back Dragon's Breath. I think I think that was Dragon's Breath, Dragon's Fang, maybe. I don't know, but it's been a minute since I've played all that. But maybe we'll play some of that. I don't know. I can't imagine not playing as live. So you imagine it's something about that. Maybe we'll be going somewhere else, like mid story. I don't know. We'll have to see. These two are just ride outs as there wasn't much to add. Indiana Jones will be set to be revealed at some point next year. Like every that is in a major reveal. That's from Todd Howard. Beach just straight up asked when we see it's like you can expect to see it next year so we'll probably see something more about it we'll probably see gameplay i think if i remember right it's first person of course being made by machine games so we'll have to see what that game even is very excited and then diablo 4 beginning annual expansions I was asked in the beginning of annual expansions i figured uh this isn't major surprise to really anyone diablo 4 uh diablo 3 got a bunch of expansions if i remember right I know it had the um, Necromancer expansion. Where it added the Necromancer and some other stuff. Maybe that's it. I don't know. It's not uncommon for them. So they'll, of course, be doing annual expansion. Of course, continuing with the season format that they have, too, where you can make a character inside of a season that goes away at the end of the season. Then you do it again. You like just keep doing that. Let's start rumor roundup for the week. Hogwarts Legacy 2 is in development. 
it is claimed, this is over at Insider Gaming, by Tom Henderson, of course. News comes via My Time to Shine H on Twitter, who says, quote, sources confirm that a Hogwarts Legacy sequel is in the works, end quote. Immediately, the claim is uh, very safe, especially uh, saying, and it also says that on here, right? Um, I'm curious what specifically the My Time to Shine person is speaking about. Like, it, are, is there a specific thing that you heard from from someone or are you just like yeah no through the grapevine uh, it's being worked it's being worked on so it's like okay um i guess this is just confirmation of something we all figured so i uh i remember when the game was launched they were like yeah so uh there's no dlc because we did like all the work in this game pretty much if i remember right that was like the exact quote almost and I was like, yeah, that makes sense. We don't get any DLC because they go straight into a second game, probably. This thing was probably greenlit before it came out. Uh, they saw the pre-order numbers. They knew they were going to make bongo bongo money. Like, just nuts amount of money, right? So, uh, and they actually have it in this, uh, Tom Henderson. Uh, within two weeks after its February 10th launch, the game sold more than 12 million copies and generated $850 million in global sales revenue. Last month, it was revealed via the Warner Brothers senior global manager that the game had achieved 256% the plan sell through at launch. The game generated over a billion in global revenue on current generation and PC alone by May 2023. Right. So they probably made all their money back before the game came out through just guaranteed pre order numbers and stuff of these things. Not before, sorry, not before the game came out. You don't understand what I mean by that. They, they probably made their money back through sales data that they, they had at their hands before the game came out. So. They were already probably in the black two weeks after the game came out, which is wild and makes you think, yeah, no, you're, we're making a sequel. You're making a sequel. I'm curious if it is one of these sequels where we're just going back to the engine. We're refining some things. We're going we're making another one in three years. Now, that's not really possible anymore, right? You can't really make games that quickly anymore, right? You, three years. Yeah. Back in decade and a half ago, decade, you could probably do, yeah, three years, you get another game out. That's just not true anymore. It takes four to five and like double the amount of money usually. So they're now no, in no short of money because they've been approved, I'm sure, for a higher budget for the next game to ensure they make even more money. And I'm positive that they'll make just as much money as they did, if not more, this time. So. Good for them. Congrats to the Hogwarts Legacy team. Everyone's getting fat bonuses over there, which they've already been enjoying for months now. And, of course, breaks and all these things. They're probably already hard at work at the second game. I'd be curious if, if they were already working on it mid-development of the previous game. I, I doubt it. This is usually not how it works. Maybe they had some pre-pro going on uh, near the end of the game's development. Who knows? room around it for the week let's start with what have you been playing because we're not really talking about what i've been playing because we have two videos dedicated to what i've been playing of course coming very soon i will give you the light summation and then uh, get you excited for the two videos that are coming now i played a lot of destiny 2 to ensure that me and my team could beat crota in the of course newly released crota's and reprised raid from d1 I will share my thoughts on the actual raid because I won't bother people here and bore them uh, with my Destiny 2 things that I intend to ramble on about. To short and sweet, uh, contest was very fulfilling to do. The actual ability to finish contest with a bunch of people was very nice. I was able to do it. Got the cool emblem. Did it with, of course, you have to beat it twice on regular and challenge mode. Was able to do it with my team after a very long and grueling hours, uh, I think at the total time was over 20 hours we were in there or something like that. I can't quite remember the timing, but uh, Crota was very, very hard, <laughs> to say the least. Now, um, uh, that was good. I enjoyed my time with that. Uh, uh, I'll have full thoughts in another video. The, the, the braid has not blown me away by any means. Starfield. Again video will be posting about starfield but to quickly note highly recommend the game if you have any interest in an rpg this is an rpg this is a great rpg play it how you want 
it does not if it, if you're playing it behind Baldur's Gate, it, you might find the can I do this not answered as often as yes, as in Baldur's Gate, you can do a lot of yes. Like, you know, you'll be like, can I do this? It's almost always yes. Right. And this one, not quite. I'm finding uh, a end of a quest. I think I see where it's going and I'm like, I wish I could do it this other way. And it would be very cool and very unique if I could do it this way. And um, to to be very vague about it, I am undercover and I want to take over the people that I'm uh, I'll put it this way. It's like you're you're a cop and you're told like, hey, take you're going undercover to like expose like like a, a cartel. See, so I want I wish I could go into the cartel and be like uh, and, and feed them information. You know, you're undercover. So you like feeding them back information. I wish there was a point where you could be like, I want to take over the cartel and you're able to like take over and like run it. That would be sick. I don't think that's possible. In the game. So that just kind of shows you like, eh, sucks that I can't do that. I feel like other games would have let me do that, like something like Witcher maybe or, or Baldur's Gate 3 or something like that, where that would be one of the ways you can go. And in this one, it's it seems like it's going to come down to a binary option, either take a, either kill all the people in the cartel or kill all your like cop people. Like it just seems that's what's going to happen. I, I don't know. Maybe I could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong because I want to take over the cartel. Anyways, enjoying the game so much. I mean, I'm in love with Starfield. When I'm not playing Starfield, I'm thinking about playing Starfield. I mean, that's about as big of a rep uh, recommendation as you can give, right? I think it is a no-brainer with Game Pass to just get Game Pass and play it. I will recommend just buying this one if you don't have a Game Pass subscription, as it's such a big game. It you'll You can always come back to it if you uh, you don't have to worry about oh do I have my Game Pass subscription right now uh, now of course not a problem for me because I, I I'm just always gonna have the, the the Game Pass stuff so I'm not worried about that but it, it I would actually recommend maybe buying this one if you don't regularly get Game Pass if you have no qualms with Game Pass having one paying the monthly subscription all these things then by all means, you don't have to buy it. I do recommend, though, if you are on and off Game Pass, just buy this one. I think it's well worth the $60, or sorry, $70. It's very, very worth it. It is going to get so much playtime out of you. Or sorry, you will get so much playtime out of it, not you. That would be, uh, you would not want the opposite of that. So I do recommend the game. Highly, highly, highly recommend the game. Very good. sag after might be coming to the games industry as a strike might be forming. This comes over the way of sag aftras official uh, web page. This, w this went live the first of September, but I wanted to still cover it here because it could be very important and a very big deal. Oh, and let's start the show for the week. I almost forgot to do that. sag aftras national board has voted unanimously to send strike authorization vote to sag after members in preparation of the union's forthcoming bargaining dates with signatory video game companies which include activision productions blind light disney character voices electronic arts productions epic games formosa interactive insomniac games take two productions voice work productions and wb games it will be nearly a year since sag after video game contract the interactive media agreement was extended beyond the original expiration date as we negotiated with with the companies for critical terms sag after members needed. Unfortunately, throughout the negotiations, the companies have failed to address those needs. For this reason, the negotiating committee and national board unanimously agree that the union should have a member-approved strike authorization in hand when bargaining resumes on September 26th. Although key issues like wages that keep up with inflation and protections against unrestrained use of artificial intelligence are common sticking points in negotiations, the interactive media agreement is a separate contract from the tv theatrical and streaming contracts against which sag after members are currently striking and here's a quote from the actual thing quote here we are this is from the uh sag after president i think quote here we go again now our interactive agreement is at a stalemate too once again we are facing employer greed and disrespect once again artificial attention to putting our members in jeopardy of reducing their opportunity to work and once again sag after is 
standing up to tyranny on behalf of its members, end quote. That is from President Fran Drescher. Sag after President Fran Drescher. Uh, that's pretty much everything. Work under the interactive it also includes a great deal of performance capture, which trained professionals, many of whom are starting to see. Uh, uh, Sag after National, you know, you know, explain. Yeah, yeah, so this is just more stuff. I think that's pretty much the brunt of what I wanted to discuss here. Six strike. Yeah, yeah, so this is important to know at the very end. A successful strike authorization vote doesn't initiate a strike. Instead, the strike authorization permits the national board to declare a strike. If the video game companies have failed to negotiate fairly with sag after for the benefit of, of its members. The union is fighting for a protective language in the contract that will require informed consent and appropriate payment for the creation and use of digital replicas and for training AI systems with our members' performance. Lot there, right? To put it short, sag after members inside the uh, video games and inside of this agreement will have a authorization to strike if they need to right i feel like that that puts it pretty plainly i don't uh, i i feel like when i first read this i was confused because i was like oh they're ready to to strike which they technically are it's just they haven't put in the order to it's just like oh you're you know you're on standby all you have to do is like like say do it and and it'll happen so I find it interesting as the video game industry is for all the things that they've tried to do. Striking is not one of them. Generally, they've had walkouts. There's been like a handful of strikes, but there has not been a unified labor march or uh, system of really any kind in the video games industry. It's kind of foreign to a lot of people. I think um, I assume it's because everyone gets well paid and, it's just not an interest for that, maybe, or maybe they lack something to get that happening. I don't know. Uh, I, I, I mean, I think everyone should probably be in a union if you're not like private or something like that. I don't know. It, it, it seems to me from the outside that we sh probably should have already had this, especially for things like writing and directing. It's just don't, we're not unified in that way in like the video games industry. There's, there's no one really there to. Uh, marry everyone together and i don't think i think there's been some small things trying here of course we do have unions and games right now one of them i think the very first union games game studio closed or something like that uh very quickly so i don't and i don't even know i don't even remember if that was because of the union that was months ago now i think so i can't quite remember what happened there but there's so many things to touch on with this right like if if we see a bigger strike in the games industry, that'd be quite interesting and something that's kind of foreign to the industry. It's not, again, not very frequent that people band together here, right? It's something very common with Hollywood. This happened in 2008, right? I want to say it was like 2008, something like that, where they did another strike, and that's what everyone jokingly says, like their favorite show from like 2008 to nine or whatever, it got like really bad. Like he had a season that was really bad because like all the writers were gone. So people who had no business writing were were writing episodes and these things. So I'll be curious to see how the game industry can handle this. This is of course only when uh, we only know the uh, ramifications of this on the 26th when the deal is up to negotiate again. We'll have to see if people agree to their terms i imagine it's more money the use of ai it has to be like profitable to somebody or you have to pay someone to do it. i don't know we'll have to see i hope everyone the best because of course unregulated capitalism can be an issue especially with the lower rungs of the industries that correspond to them right Very wise, wise things. Of course, Sean Layden uh, sold out, unfortunately, to uh, Tencent and is on their board overseeing various things. Very, uh, was very sad to hear this, but it doesn't mean that he is an incredibly smart. Now, this is him discussing Apple and Amazon as big threats to the game industry, right? So he was speaking at a games industry.biz investment summit. Uh, Layden labeled the likes of Google. Netflix, Amazon, and a Apple as, quote, barbarians at the gate, end quote. I find this very interesting. This is, of course, Video Games Chronicle by Tom Ivan. 
Quote, right now we see all the big players going, oh, gaming, it's bringing in billions of dollars a year. I want a piece of that. And so we have Google, Netflix, Apple, and Amazon wanting to get a piece and trying to disrupt our industry. Former PlayStation uh, US boss, Lay uh, Layden is interesting how they wrote this, who was chairman of the company Worldwide Studios Group when he left Sony in 2019, said Apple disrupted the music industry with the 99 cent songs on iTunes and Netflix's streaming platforms like right had an irreversible impact on the traditional movie business. Quote, I'm hoping gaming will be the first industry where we disrupt ourselves, where it doesn't take a Google or an Amazon to completely flip the table. We should be somewhere else to see these changes coming and prepare ourselves for that uh, eventuality. Uh, end quote. Layden also spoke about Sony's entry into the games market, initially as a joint venture between Sony Electronics and Sony Music Japan, and about how the company sought to complete the established players of the era. Quote, PlayStation knew that we couldn't do what Sega and Nintendo did and provide the bulk of the software. We didn't know enough how to make it that, sorry, ellipses provide the bulk of the software and ellipses. We didn't know enough how to make it. We had to be the third party platform, so we had to get Namco, Square, EA, Activision. Those Sony Music guys are the ones that got Square to move Final Fantasy VII off of Nintendo and onto PlayStation. Probably the biggest sea change move. So yeah, we weren't endemic, but I think we brought the entertainment piece in, which really helped accelerate the success of PlayStation. End quote. The other biggest threats to the status quo in Layden's eyes are industry consolidations, which he said, quote, can be the enemy of creativity, end quote, and the rising cost of game development, which he labeled an, quote, existential threat, end quote. In 2020, in 2020, and we discuss this all the time, Layden called overall AAA development not sustainable and suggested that game length and pricey may have to be adjusted to combat ballooning budgets. There's a lot here, right? So I don't think that we're seeing anything new, right? That we do have the kind of barbarians at the gate situation with these big name companies. And I always brought that up as we have to really remember what these certain plays are doing from both the PlayStation and the Xbox side of things, right? Sometimes their things that they do are not something to address the now, but the later. And I really, really want to point towards both the Activision Blizzard purchase and the Bungie purchase from both PlayStation and Microsoft, right? I believe both of those purchases were, were both to satisfy what we know now, but also to choke out other companies from buying them, right? If we really do have a Google, Netflix, Apple, Amazon at the gates, of course, he doesn't mention, of course, I wonder why, Tencent or the Saudi uh, Saudi Arabia group, of course, the Saudi uh, investment fund. We have all these things on the side, right? Crying to get into the industry by buying and buying and buying, right? The only option to keep that from happening is purchasing IP or full-on companies, right? And in reality, the only option is really buying the company because... Uh, Almost no company will just give away their IP unless you're Microsoft and just give away Alan Wake for whatever reason. Now, discussing specifically about Barbarians at the Gate, I think this is true. I think Bungie and the Activision Blizzard purchase are just clear put. We need these guys off the board because we cannot have an Amazon, a Google, a Netflix in here waving around the money. He doesn't say Disney's. I find that... Um, I find that interesting that maybe they just don't have an interest. We don't have them taking these vital things we need. Uh, I think Microsoft, that, that might be one of the primary reasons why they bought them. Of course, we'll never know. Uh, we, we only know that like, Oh no, we wanted a, we, we want um, like a mobile thing. I'm like, I, I'm sure you do, but there, I'm sure there's other reasons, right? If you hear and and let's not forget the reason they bought Bethesda was because they were going to be choked out of exclusives for years. PlayStation was already sniffing to make a uh, Starfield exclusive. Um, they already had made Deathloop and Ghostwire Tokyo exclusive before they were even bought. Right. So these things were already happening. They had to jump on a, hey, we're just buying you out and you're going to make our games. Now, of course, that is wild when you compare the two to each other. One was like, oh, I'll have you for a little while. The other guy was like, I'm just buying you out. Right. Very curious why Xbox doesn't just do uh, short exclusivity. I know Phil said he doesn't like it. Why don't you? <laughs> Anyways, um, 
it's probably because it's too expensive with the game pass maybe i don't know. uh going back to to the big guys entering industry I, I do see that and it's almost like you have to look at a map and be like look we can't afford to lose these guys forever so so let's just get them now right i, f- I find that that's the reason probably playstation bought bungie right to ensure that they don't lose it to xbox of course xbox i'm sure was sniffing around bungie uh repeatedly and although they didn't buy bungie in the classic sense that we think about it it might as it is still technically a playstation studios they still technically own something in the agreement that they paid for right excuse me so we are seeing a almost line in the sand being made and almost like a preparation of like look we got to get ready for when a netflix starts really pumping a google and apple start really trying to pump into this industry google tried they failed immediately they didn't really put their backs into it i think that's obvious if they actually did really want to try here they would have they're already moving on it seems like to other things and they barely care about this industry anymore once an apple decides they want in that is i think when it is troublesome i've said it for years i'm surprised apple hasn't just bought sony at this point it just seems like something that i've heard like has always been a rumor that they've that they've thought up through the grapevine that they want sony which would put them in the games industry to make a lot of money maybe they're just content with the app store i did hear rumors that they're looking into me or it's always these things too where it's like rumors that they're going to buy something it's like that that's not really happening it's just what i mean by that is economists are like well this could happen or this could make sense i saw like some theories that apple could uh go out and straight up buy disney for some reason and that was always like a rumored thing for because of a deal with their iPad exclusivity for Disney or something like that. I can't quite remember, but there was all these rumors of that thing. So anyways, losing the point a little bit, looking at these big players in the industry, we should be a little wary because whenever they make the splash, it will be big, right? I'm actually surprised Google wasn't bigger. Right. All they did really was take a few studio. Uh, they took like a handful of studios, I think, and made most of their stuff. Took a guy that no one really missed. No offense. And then they just did their thing. It's like okay. And then they left. So I'm surprised the 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 actual Google industry google entering the industry wasn't a bigger deal we'll have to see what happens because we definitely don't want a netflix or a apple itunes situation in the industry you can say um i actually think the apple music thing will i mean maybe i'm dumb here but that seems to actually be a good the netflix streaming platform seem to have ultimately as at least right now seems to have been a bad impact on the industry as a whole specifically for movies and these things because they're having trouble making money and that's what half the sec after problem is about of course they want to bring up like the ais and these things but also money is also the problem with a lot of this right they want to make the money that they're owed all of these streaming platforms for years have not been paying people that's how they've been able to justify the low pricing right If you see what all these economists are saying now, it's like these things don't make sense at the price, right? You have to double them for them to make any sense, right? We're, I think, beginning to see that because they have not been paying the people. You hear all these things where it's like the uh, Aaron Paul, the the co-star of Breaking Bad, didn't make any money off Netflix streaming. Like, not a cent. That's pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. Now, you can say contracts and all these things and et cetera, et cetera. I understand that, but it still is weird. And it still shows you that the streaming as a whole might negatively affect the industry in the long term. And the short term, it was awesome. And we might have, it might be over now. We might see balloon costs very quickly. Pretty much everyone has raised prices and it probably will happen again. Embracer closes Volition and also announces layoffs at Gearbox. Now, I could not see the amount that they lost at Gearbox. I, I could be crazy here, or maybe I just wasn't in the right places. 
I just saw like a like a random handful of people were laid off. I I couldn't see who many. I saw like a translator was laid off. I just couldn't find like a concrete story on it. So I'll just see if I can find something maybe for next week or something. I'm not sure, but this is from the Volition. So again, they closed the Volition. So the Volition team has proudly created world classic entertainment for fans around the globe for 30 years. We've been driven by a passion for our community and always work to deliver joy, surprise, and delight. This past June, Embracer Group announced a restructuring program to strengthen Embracer and maintain its position as a leader of the video games industry. As part of the program, they evaluated strategic and operational goals and made the difficult decision to close Volition effective immediately. To help our team, we are working to provide job assistance and help smooth the transition for our Volition family members. We thank our customers and fans around the world for all the love and support over the years. You will always be in our, our hearts, Volition Games. Embracer Group improves how terrible they are at their jobs and how horrible they are to this industry. I think they are actually a negative, uh, and I think that's actually kind of um, obvious now. So Volition was in the games industry for years. I want to say they started in like the 80s or something like that. Uh, Volition it started, it founded a company as Parallax in 1993, so I was wrong. It was the uh, early 90s, and it was originally Parallax. And they developed Descent and Descent 2, and, and it looks like a couple other things. But that is, a, and of course, they made Saints Row, Red Faction, uh, all these things. It is a shame that we have lost volition to embraces incompetency, frankly. Uh, it makes sense that they would, it also makes sense and no sense that they close volition. Once, they are probably one of the most expensive ones. Two, they recently missed on Saints Row even though they made money, I'm pretty sure, on Saints Row, but maybe not enough. But also, it was what, probably one of their most talented teams. If not the talented. Most talented. Or at least the most experienced, you could probably say. It's just pretty shocking that they're gone now. Volition always had a little special place in my heart. I love the Red Faction games. Of course, Red Faction 1 and 2 on PlayStation 2 were big deals for me. I loved them, and now they're just gone forever, and that makes me sad. I hope for the best everyone involved, of course, like we always say on the show. I hope everyone lands on their feet and all these things. It's nothing to sniff at losing your job. Now, Saints Row and all these things being lost is quite sad. Curious, I'm assuming Embracer just absorbs the IP. Um, I hate Embracer even more because they're now just proven how incompetent they are. They don't know what they're doing. They inflated way too fast. It doesn't take a genius to know all of that was going to blow up in their face. And it frankly kind of makes me upset that this happened. It makes me upset. I wish they never even came into this industry. I think they're actually going to make it worse by the time they're gone. And they will be. I am positive of that. They will not have the capital to live another decade or two, probably, unless something radically changes on their books. I think they will be slow. They will slowly evaporate into nothing. And I will be on the grave being happy that they're gone because they frankly have made uh, the industry a little worse from buying all these people, having all these people under your umbrella, not and being obvious that you don't have the capital to do this. Date updates. PlayStation Plus increase. This is important to cover really quickly. PlayStation Plus is becoming more expensive for 12 months. Essential will be 80 bucks. Extra will be $134.99. Premium will be $159.99. I am not going to be partaking in any of that. I play for uh, I just play for Essential. So I pay for the 80 bucks. That's fine. I can't imagine paying for anything extra unless you're actively using the subscription every few weeks. I would not be paying those prices. Uh, PlayStation Plus monthly games, Saints Row, Black Desert, Traveler Edition, and Generation Jero. Very, very weak month, especially when you have to think about that you also announced that you're raising prices in the exact same blog post. Uh, very weak, very sad to see. Don't know what they were thinking, but here we are. Banishers, Ghost of Eason, a very Elijah-looking game. PS5, Series S, and X, and PC is going to be coming November 7th. Finally has a release date. I cannot wait to see that game. Beyond Good and Evil, 20th Anniversary Edition has been rated by the ESRB. Cool. I don't really care, to be honest with you. Not, never really a Beyond Good and Evil guy. I never saw what people liked in it. Good on you if you're, you're excited, though. 
Of course, we have what's queued up for the week. We can discuss games, podcasts, TV shows, movies, anything. Of course, you let me know what's queued up. Me, I'm discussing some Starfield. I'm playing. I'm just playing Starfield, and that's probably it. Light Destiny two rating when the when the buds want to get together and play something. Aside from that, it's just Starfield. I won't bore because this will just become a Starfield episode. I will be making. Um, sorry, I will be uploading a video very soon. On all of my Starfield thoughts, I will be doing a review. I will be doing a spoiler cast. Be ready for all of that. I will need to figure out a group for that. Anyways, aside from that, thank you so much for joining me. It's, again, light news week for this week. We still went 45 minutes, though. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. Again, remember, go Chief.